Well, I love the choice of the Telecaster. Thank you. I know you play <laughs> other guitars. Sure, and, and, sure. Uh, what is it about the Telecaster? They're very cool. They're very cool. I was a kid. My dad, I started playing guitar when I was five, right? But mm -hmm. when I was four, I'm the youngest of five uh, in my family. I have a brother and three sisters. And I would have been out before my father started playing guitar. He would have been in his 30s at that point. Um, and I just was like enamored with him and the guitar, mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't just the guitar. And he knew this and I made, was very vocal about it, like, that's cool. And, and somehow, and I wish I could remember how this all added up, but he, someone my father worked with had a, a life-size poster of Bruce Springsteen's Telecaster. Yes, Looks not like dissimilar that. from this. Right. And uh, my father brought it home and my father was a visual artist and uh, he, traced it on big tracy this this cut out this poster he put it to trace it and then out of plywood he cut a telecaster and painted it just like a you know single ply board and painted the pick guard on and painted all the stuff and he made one for me and my brother okay and it was this kind of like stop gap of like well you obviously like the guitar uh is this what you like about it? Just the artifact. And I carried this thing around for a year. And it was just, we would change every few months. My dad, well, let's, let's paint it red now. Okay. <laughs> you know, and he painted the strings on. And That's the pretty cool. It was killer. I fell out of my bunk bed one night. I fell on it. And I cracked <laughs> in half. And I was mortified. And I think that could have been, a, you know, my brother was so sweet. He loved it. But he wasn't, he's, he's kind of, okay, it's cool. But, you know, uh, it seems like it's your thing. So, all to say this romantic story was being built around the Telecaster for me. And at the time, it wasn't read as an affinity for that particular model guitar. It was just an affinity for guitar. And when I was five, I got a guitar. And it was a Strad. And my father had a Telecaster. And that was my world for many years. Um, at some point, as an adult, I, I, I kind of remembered that. And I also was finding that I was hitting a bit of a wall with getting what I was looking for on the guitar um, with arch top guitars. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember talking to Jim Hall about this where he would say, you know, and remember, Julian, that an amplifier allows you to play quietly. That's its its job. And, and I thought, well, if I really want a sensitive lyrical thing, I think I need to loosen my grip on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And part of doing that is, is delegating that this is the, the controller, this is where you touch it, and that's where the sound comes out. Right. And, it, and it's a dance that I continue to um, learn about. But in seeing that picture get so clear, I thought, well, I think a Telecaster is probably the most, um, I wouldn't say neutral, but probably the most honest instrument for this this pursuit I'm on. You know, it's, it doesn't hype things terribly. And mm -hmm. I, I think I had a lot of misnomers as about the Telecaster. I thought, well, it's a bright guitar. It's a trebly guitar. And... And then I'd find Jimmy Bryant, you yes. know, kind of like the, the, the birth of the Black Artelli in yeah. the music culture. And someone who's, you know, there at the inception of the guitar, frankly, with Leo Fender. Um, I thought, well, that's the greatest jazz guitar tone I've ever heard. And then you have, you know, Ed Bicker and you have all these other people. You that's have Mike right. Stern. You have all, all, these, all these people. And, and quickly I said, okay, well, that's not the conundrum. You, I know it can be dark, but can it capture these overtones that I hear on acoustic guitar? And then that sent me down the rabbit hole of, you know, a telly is a different telly with, this is a Dynasonic pickup from a kind of, it, it's called an Ellisonic by Ron Ellis, but it, it's more in the family of like a Gretsch. Yeah. This sounds very different than a P90, than the original pickup, than a humbucker. Um, so I just thought, this is great. seems like there's no end in sight as far as what you can do. Let me kind of latch on to this. Um, so it, they're very cool. And they're, they're, they're I, I just like, I just like them. I found me as a music producer, I would, the Telly was the most versatile guitar to do overdubs with. Isn't that interesting? Records. And huh. no matter what the style of music of a, of, of a group I'd be working with, yeah. or if it was a solo artist, a lot of times I would reach for my Telly over other guitars right. just because it seemed to fit any style of music. That's it. And I think, uh, to me, it seems like a very natural jazz guitar. Doesn't it though? Yeah. I think it's, a, I think it's completely, I mean, it, you look at even it's, in, it's when it was kind of conceived, it was, we're talking late 40s, early 50s, so it's kind of, you know, bebop has occurred. Yep. Now we're going into um, a cooler sound with jazz in some way, but also rock and roll is being born. And so there's an electricity of the within the music that matches the guitar. I have to say too, Rick, what it, uh, your perspective from as a producer is kind of warms my heart because I do think 
I try to think of it that way, of the bird's eye view of it. How are you going to put this in the mix? You know, how does this fit frequency-wise in a band, in an ensemble? So I, what you say resonates that, of course, that would be a go-to. Like, it's just going to slip in. Yeah. It's going to do the job. It, it can really occupy so many. There's so many different possibilities with a Telecaster. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, there's the, th the tuning part of it. It's very st incredibly stable guitar. Complete, I hardly yeah. ever had to get my Telecasters I completely set get up. That. With your sound, too, mm -hmm. there, there's a... Uh, a bloom with mm -hmm. the notes, a fatness with it, and it's it's Thanks. your personal style. It's also, mm -hmm. I think, with the flat wounds, playing flat wounds on the guitar it. gives it a a there's a clarity yeah that you have with it, and um, that's true. And, which I think is, is part of your personal touch too, though. But tellies are are great at reproducing. It's probably the pickup. You don't probably, I imagine you only use the front pickup. I only mostly. use the front pickup. I, I've had a lot many friends try to. Get me back here, and uh, I and I love it. It's a this is. I did a whole tour once just to kind of, um, almost settle a bet. Uh, was the if see if I could do a whole tour on the bridge pickup with my mm -hmm. trio, in the nights one and two I was like, I go back to the room my ears would be ringing and I thought this is a terrible, <laughs> you know no one asked me to do this it's kind of a little bit messed up but but then there's a with after the first couple of days I I. I became obsessed, and because all the overtones were coming through these backline amplifiers, and it felt raw and it felt beautiful, and I kind of built up some nerve around it where I thought this is great. And then I, I took a, whatever I was on tour for a little bit, and when I came back, I couldn't muster, I, I couldn't like, I couldn't jump off the diving board again. I thought, well, I did it. I proved to myself I could do it. I think I'm going to live here where I have just a little more versatility. Um, but but what you say about the bloom, I think. I, I think it it's, has a lot to do in my experience with the amp. Yeah. I, I come. I years ago I started playing these old Tweed Champs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from the late '50s, and they, especially in partnership with a Telecaster, do paint a very compelling picture. Yeah. You know, they are both. They're kind of from the same era. It comes from the same ethos of Leo Fender, um, and they're also there's a lot of compression in these little amps. Yes. So there, you can play very delicately, and if especially if you don't want grit too much grit you have to play very lightly to keep it from overdriving and i think it has this um like a, like a there's just a volatility between with the, the the guitar and the amp share that to me is the bedrock of what i hear with a telecaster though i use like today we're in a, a newer fender amp and i use a deluxe style amp by and that's for volume that's more, for right? volume it's a to, little bit to play with drums and things like that you know what's funny about the though rick in it, it, it's it's kind of yes and no. I, the champ for me was the perfect volume for bass and drums. Okay. For for a long time because I don't I don't play terribly loud and those are though you don't what what you don't what you lose in decibel level, you gain in just um, directness of mid range. Yes. So you can be quiet on a champ and the person in the back of the room can hear it loud like through it, almost too much. Yeah. It's almost like a frequency you can't not hear. Um, but what I started to notice was that there's when the aperture is that small with an eight-inch speaker, yeah, and you're in certain rooms that are bigger, um, yeah, there's a honkiness, uh, an oink to the thing sure, yeah. that we all know, and, and you can wrestle it yeah. out. But I just kind of thought, well, you know, a deluxe style amp, especially a black panel deluxe, that just opens the aperture. So any record I've made in the last few years, what you're hearing, if you were to listen to those records, I guess, is um, a deluxe and a champ at the same time. So the champ is more the forward sound, and then there's just a little bit of width from a deluxe, um, which I think is the best of all the worlds. Wide aperture, compression from a champ. That's all. That's what that is. Do you find that certain types of voicings, like I'm, I want to say it's on the newest record, mm. maybe it's on the first track. There's yeah. a, a voicing that you play that's yeah. like um, it's like an F major, but you have the open B string and you have G sharp on the top. That sounds right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and a voicing like that, that's you're playing point. like a, you're playing F C. Yeah. A yeah. G sharp with yeah. open B. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when I hear a voicing like that, and it's so clear, yeah. and there's no weird beating or anything like that, right, and I think right, having right. it having a larger speaker helps those. I think you're right. Where where, it, where those things have space to move those those when you have that major seventh in there and and it absolutely. But, and but and you have the fullness with that spread triad on the bottom, and it just sounds beautiful. Well, Rick, that's so hip that you. I mean, this is that chord you're talking. It, it's, Yes. Right. You have something yes. like that. Yes. I mean, it's true. And it sounds it sounds perfect. Yeah. Like, how does it congeal like that? Yes. 
it beats me, and I think, but I do think there's an it's an aperture. Is it, is it on the new record? And it's, it's so it's on, the first it's on that track? Pr- probably that first track, Missing Voices. It's on. 